Hola and welcome back to another session of character modeling. I'm Smore aka Steve Moore and today we're going to be making a shirt in Marvelous Designer. It has been a while since my last video so let's not waste any more time and just get straight into it. To start you'll need some good pattern reference. This is essential. Google image search certainly helps here and if you want to get really serious, you could purchase some pattern books or your local library might even have some pattern books for free. For this tutorial, I've made a pattern which you can download for free. The link is in the description below. If you have a similar garment on hand that you can study, this is also very helpful. Lastly, it really helps to have a notepad for jotting down measurements and simple calculations. I use Windows trusty and free notepad or rootpad. To begin, we need to take some basic measurements of our avatar. For this, I'd like to have a notepad handy to jot down those measurements. To measure our avatar, go to the basic circumference tool, which you'll find under avatar measurement here. I'll start with the chest. Left click on the avatar and then click a second point along the line that you wish to measure. At this point, a loop will appear. When you let go of the mouse, you'll be able to tweak the angle that the loop lies across the surface. Click again to apply. I'll just jot that measurement down 99.98 centimeters. Repeat the process for the waist. For the top of the shoulder, I'll use the surface tape measure which you'll also find under the avatar measurement drop down menu here. Left click to begin the measurement and double click at the point you want it to end. And once again, just take a, a note of that measurement. I took a couple more measurements, the bicep and then finished up with the circumference at the top of the arm. With our basic measurements taken, it's time to start blocking in the patterns. To begin, we'll create a simple rectangle. Select Create Rectangle here. This will be the front right panel of our shirt. If we think of our shirt as being made of four panels, front left and right, and a back piece that has left and right sides, then we can get the width for our front panel by dividing the circumference of the chest measurement we took by four. Here I've rounded up our chest measurement to 100 just to make things easier. So our front chest panels become 25 centimeters wide each and our back one is 50. To adjust the width of our shirt, we select edit pattern. And then right click on the line we want to edit and choose the change length option. In the change length menu, Enter the length you want and specify both for the direction so that the line is scaled in both directions as opposed to from the origin of one end or the other. For the height, I take another quick measurement and then adjust the height of the panel. To begin the opening of the collar, right click on the line and choose split line. Now in the uh, options for the split line tool, I go with the split into two lines option. Using the silhouette of my avatar in the 2D pattern window, I eyeball the height of the collar. And I, enter, I just enter my best guess at the uh, appropriate value and you know, trial and error to get it right. I move the top point to create a wedge shaped opening for that collar. I also check my pattern reference and move the top left point to create the slant of the shoulder. To begin the sleeve opening, right click on the outer edge and choose our trusty old friend, the split line tool. We refer to my, referring to the reference for the general shape and size and of course the avatar and the, uh, the silhouette of the avatar in the 2D window helps. For the top of the shoulder, I copy my measurement from my trusty notepad and using the change length again, adjust that dimension. I decided to make the top of the shoulder a little shorter still. This was due to uh, looking at the reference I had, the pattern reference, and thinking uh, it looks like it should be shorter. To complete the rough sleeve opening, I used the split line tool once again, 
and this time go for a uniform split. And then using my pattern reference as a guide, I position the new point to make the approximate shape of the sleeve hole. And at this point, I want to talk just briefly about my general workflow for Marvelous Designer. Now, although the final sleeve hole needs to be a smooth curve, I like to block things out at first. Leave them as leave uh, leave the curves as line segments and get the overall shape. Later on, we can convert it to a, to a curve. But for now, let's just keep things simple. I make a quick adjustment to the height of the front pattern, just eyeballing and knowing it needs to be a little longer to tuck into some pants. To make the right front pattern, we choose the Transform Pattern tool, click on our pattern to select, and then right click, and copy, and choose Mirror Paste. This mirrored copy of the front pattern forms the right front pattern. To begin the back panel, I right click the front pattern again and this time choose copy. And then I paste that pattern off to the side. After pasting the copy, I right click on the pattern in the 3D viewport and choose flip horizontal. In anticipation of positioning the panel, the patterns ready for sewing, I turn on the arrangement points, which can be found here. To complete the back pattern, right click the center line and choose Unfold. This gives us our complete back pattern. Based on my reference and using the avatar as a guide, I tweak the points of the collar and sleeve holes to get the rough shape of our back pattern. To position the patterns ready for sewing, I select one of the patterns then hold the shift key down and click on a dot which I think best represents where the center of that pattern should be located on the avatar. The pattern snaps to the dot and wraps around the avatar a little. This will help our shirt fit neatly to the avatar when simming. Here I'm just repositioning the patterns by hand a little to better line up with the avatar and also so that it's clear for you guys which edges we're going to sew. Before we go ahead and sew the patterns together, it's important to tell Marvel's designer whether the shirt is going to sit on top of our pants or be tucked into the pants. In this case, I want the shirt to sit on top of the pants. To do this, select all the patterns and open the property editor, which can be found under display window property editor. In the property editor, find the layer field. The default number is zero, which is considered the bottom. A pattern assigned layer one would sim on top of a pattern assigned layer zero. So I set the shirt's patterns to a layer above the pants layers. Now we're ready to sew the torso patterns together. Go to the sewing menu and choose segment sewing. And now we select the edges to sew. When sewing edges, I try to select the same corresponding location on both edges I'm sewing. So for example, if I select the top edge of the front right pattern, then I also want to select the top edge of the back right pattern that I'm going to sew to. Finally, we can fit our new garment to our avatar by clicking the sim button here. And our rough shirt fits nicely to the avatar. I'm happy about that. At this stage, I should point out that although we have sewn the front of the shirt for now, ultimately this will be replaced with working buttons that, you know, we can stitch them all the way up or leave them slightly open, um, simulate it accurately and realistically. So it's going to be pretty cool. Now, although I just said our shirt is fitting pretty good, in reality, it's way too wide at the waist. Now, this is where those measurements we took come in hand again. Checking my notepad, I see that the waist has a width of 75 centimeters. Now, similar to the chest, I divide the number by four, which gives me 18.75 centimeters for the bottom length of our front panels. Using the change length tool, and this time specifying start for the direction, I adjust the front patterns. Now using start for the direction pulls the outside of the pattern towards the center, 
keeping the center line of the shirt straight vertically. You may have noticed at the last minute I decided to give the waist a little more room and I rounded 18.75 centimeters up to 20. You know, I don't want the shirt to be skin tight, so I gave it a bit of, a bit of wiggle room there. Now the back pattern has a center point. So this time I adjust the length using the end as, as the option for the direction. So the lines scale from the center out. A quick sim. And we see the shirt is fitting the waist much better now. Next, I pull the waistline down a little bit more. I'm referring to my pattern and real shirts here, which allow considerable length to tuck under the pants, or in our case, to hang over the pants. Another sim, and isn't that sharp? Our boy is sure to get a date now. Before we start on the sleeves, I want to make sure that the lines defining the sleeve opening are a little smoother and closer to the pattern. This will give us the final length so we can build the tops of our sleeves to match. To do this, we select Edit Pattern and then right click on the point that defines the rough shape of the sleeve opening and choose Convert to Curve Point. The result is a nice smooth curve, but we still need to tweak the curve to match our pattern. So, we select Edit Curvature, which can be found in the same menu as Edit Pattern here. Click and drag on the curve until it approximates the shape of your reference pattern. Uh, we repeat the process on the back pattern and then delete the opposite side and we do the unfold step so that it's nice and symmetrical. Similarly, for the front pattern, I redo the mirror paste procedure so everything is symmetrical and finally stitch the whole thing back up. And now it's on to the sleeves. Referring to the measurements we took, I create another rectangle and set the length of the top to equal the circumference of the shoulder. Now this is just to get the shape into the ballpark as we're gonna be turning this into a complex curve. I set the width of the bottom of his sleeve to be a little wider than the bicep dimension. Next, we turn on the arrangement points and use them to snap the sleeve pattern to the arm. You can also do this by hand. It's not super important. We just want to get the thing wrapping around the avatar and not falling to the ground. Now it's time to make that crazy looking curve that is the top of the sleeve. First, I right click on the top edge of the sleeve and this time choose Split. In the Options box for Split, choose Uniform Split, which will split the edge directly in the center. I pull the outer points down to form a peak in the center. Now, using the Uniform Split option, I insert a couple more points to help define the key points that will create our curve on the left side of the pattern. Next, I uniform split the bottom edge of the sleeve and delete the points on the right side of the pattern. This allows us to select the edge that will be the center of our pattern and use the unfold option to create a symmetrical pattern. Before proceeding, I decide to freeze the torso patterns as I'm happy with how they're fitting and I just want to focus on the sleeve at this point. Now to do this, I choose transform pattern, select the patterns I want to freeze, right click and choose freeze. Now back to that sleeve curve. Select all the top points except the outer points. Right click and convert to curve. Nice, that's a good looking curve. Now we need to add back a center point. So we right click on the new curve and do a uniform split. We did it this way. So we would have a smooth curve all the way across. If we had left out the center point when converting to curve, we'd have a peak there. I adjust the length of the sleeve 
as we want short sleeves for this design and quickly stitch the sleeve into the torso and run the sim, just to see how it's going to work. I think the bottom of the sleeve is too wide, so I just tweak those lengths a little bit. You may have noticed that I did not match the length of the top of the sleeve to the sleeve hole. Don't worry, I just want to tweak the shape of the sleeve hole a little more before I do that. Once I'm happy with the shape of the curves, I'm ready to fix the lengths of the top sleeve segments so they match the dimensions for the sleeve hole. This is easy. Just select the edge of the sleeve holes on the torso patterns with the Edit Pattern tool, and Marvelous Designer displays the length of the line segment. I quickly jot down those values and then go to the corresponding curve segment on the sleeve. Right click and choose Change Length. Now it's just a matter of setting the length, and I use the Start option as the direction so the line is scaling from the center point. Run the sim again and voila! You know, the shirt looks a bit loose to me. So, to fix this, I tweak the size of the patterns for a tighter fit. Uh, using the Transform Pattern tool, I select all the patterns in the 2D pattern window. A bounding box appears around the shirt patterns and this allows me to scale them down a bit. Yeah, that looks better. To create the left sleeve, we use the copy and mirror paste feature, then hand position the new sleeve and stitch it to the torso. Now I want to turn our attention to the bottom of the shirt. Using our reference, as, as always, we're, we're going to refine the bottom of the shirt the same way we created the complex curve of the sleeve top. So we block out the shapes of the curves and then use convert to curve point to create the final shape of the shirt bottom. That's it for this session. Uh, next time we're going to cover the collar, which is going to be a lot of fun. I look forward to catching you then. Uh, if you liked this video or you found it helpful, leave a like and subscribe. Until next time, ciao.